Hey, what's up? Chris Sider here, and today we are going to be talking about three of the most important strategies that you need to be employing if you want your ex back. But first, one of the most asked about questions that I get is, Chris, do I even have a chance with my ex? Well, I always recommend if you're wondering about this question to stop by our website, www.exboyfriendrecovery.com. Dot com and take our quiz there. I put together a quiz designed to help you understand what kind of chance you have with your ex. It will only take you about a minute and a half. It's a really high quality quiz. It's not like one of those quiz that you see on one of those, uh, you know, like what, are you a Jedi or something like that, right? This is an actual quiz that will take your answers, put it through an algorithm and give you an idea of everything I've seen from my experience. So if you want to take that quiz, all you have to do is stop by our website, www.exboyfriendrecovery.com. And also, if you are watching this on YouTube and you want to take the quiz, simply look in the description link below and click on the link there. It will take you right to the quiz and you can start taking it there. All right, let's begin. I've been doing this for about six and a half years. I started my website, www.exboyfriendrecovery.com back in 2012 and started working with people going through breakups then. And over the years, after I've seen so many situations, I've noticed that there are three prevalent strategies and people who get their exes back. And so what I'd like to do today is show you what those three strategies are and make sure that you're implementing them if you are trying to get your ex back. Let's begin. So one thing that people always tend to ask me is they'll come up to me and say, Chris, what are the very best strategies for getting an ex back, right? And there's a lot of different strategies. Uh, I've covered many on my YouTube channel. I've covered hundreds on my website. But after six plus years, I've been doing this since actually 2012. It's 2018 now. Uh, after looking and seeing a lot of different success stories and everything, I've noticed an interesting through line. There are certain strategies that people typically employ to get results. And I always find it helpful to point these strategies out to people so they can actually see what other people are doing that are working. So those three strategies are the value chain or the idea of the value chain, the no contact rule, which I've talked about quite a bit, and a synergy of commitment. Now, some of these things you may have heard of, some of these things you may not have heard of. I'm going to go really quick and give you a crash, crash course on each one of these st three strategies, starting from the top. Let's start with a value chain. So what is a value chain? Well, in business, people use value ladders or value chains to describe exactly how a product gets from point A to point B, how it's uh, thought up, how it's made, how it's sold, everything. So in the essence, it's a blueprint, right? And so what I've done is create sort of the value chain or blueprint or game plan for people who want to try to get their ex back, right? And so I've actually got it broken up into four components here, as you can see, actually. But each one of those components, uh, and for reference, the four components are the no contact rule, text messaging, phone calls, but the phone calls can be all-encompassing with FaceTime, Skype, basically talking on the phone, um, and in-person interactions, right? But you'll notice that each one of these levels of the value chain has certain sub-levels, right? So there's certain things that you need to do to get the most out of the no contact rule. And once you do those things, you can advance on to texting. That's really how the value chain is meant to work. And I noticed that when people stick to this basic value chain, this basic blueprint, they tend to get a lot better results than people who, let's say, do a no contact rule and skip immediately to that in-person interaction. They're skipping two important processes of the value chain. So the value chain is one of the most important strategies for getting an X back. And Really, the big takeaway I want you to take from this is it takes discipline to see this through to the end. So let's move on to the next big strategy. So the next big strategy that I've noticed works time and time again is the no contact rule. So actually, if you actually go back towards the value chain, you can see that's the first step of the value chain. And that first step actually has been present in 
to my knowledge, about 70% of the success stories that we've had on our website, Ex-Boyfriend Recovery, but 100% of our success stories in our private Facebook group have utilized a no-contact rule in some way, shape, or form. Not all of them made it through the end, but they did use a no-contact rule. So what is a no-contact rule? Well, I've done lots of videos about it, so if you want a more in-depth explanation, go to our YouTube channel, type in the no-contact rule, and I have done multiple videos. But basic crash course definition is it's a period of time, typically usually between 21 to 45 days where you ignore your ex in an attempt to make them miss you while at the same time cultivating your own personal life. So that's the no contact rule, right? And so really when you look at the no contact rule, the secret sauce of it is as we know, the contact rule is a strategy in which we ignore our ex, right? But the true secret sauce of it is what you do with that time during the no contact rule. So from what I've seen, what separates the people who are successful with the no contact rule from the people who are unsuccessful is the people who are successful use that time wisely. So you're ignoring your ex, let's say 30 days. They're not just going to sit around, twiddle their thumbs and hope, you know, the sky falls and he'll come drop into your lap. No, the people who tend to get better results, the people who really work on cultivating their own personal life, they really try to make leaps forward in areas that they've always wanted to make leaps forward in. So the best explanation I can kind of give you when it comes to the no contact rule and what you should be doing during it is think of yourself as kind of like a caterpillar, right? So the caterpillar is ultimately undergoing this metamorphosis over into to a butterfly, right? So when you start the no contact rule, you're kind of a caterpillar, but by the end of the no contact rule, you want to be a butterfly, that's the best maybe visual imagery I can give you. Now let's move on to the third and probably the thing that most people want to hear about, and that's the synergy of commitment. So what do I mean by synergy of commitment? Well, we talked about the value chain. We've talked about the no contact rule. Those are two key strategies that we've seen work time and time again. But when it actually comes to getting a commitment out of an X, that's a different thing. And I've noticed that there's a synergy between six different principles, right? Satisfaction, alternatives, investment, scarcity, urgency, and fear of loss. If you can create these six different components, there's a highly likely chance that you're going to push your ex over the edge and he will want to commit to you. So let's talk about each one of these things. So what is satisfaction? Well, in this context, satisfaction is how satisfied your partner is with the relationship. And alternatives is... If he's sitting there thinking, wow, I could do better than her. Um, is there a better alternative out there? That would be alternatives. And investment. How much has he invested into the relationship? And the most common misconception I see with investment is people actually come and sit and think that investment is only in the form of him saying certain nice things to them. No, investment can be things like how much money he's investing, how much time he's invested, how much emotional energy he's invested into this relationship. And they've done really interesting studies and they've seen that actually when you look at people who are very unsatisfied with their relationships and you look at people who really believe that they have better alternatives out there than the person they're with, they will still not leave that relationship if they feel like they've invested too much time, energy, and money into it. So investment's kind of the big 500 pound elephant in the room that no one ever talks about. And then of course there's scarcity. Well, have you done a good job of making your ex believe that you are one of a kind? That certainly plays a role. Urgency. Is there an urgent reason that you would make your ex want to actively commit to you? And of course, a fear of loss. If he doesn't commit to you, have you done a decent job of making him think he'll lose you forever? So, there's a really interesting synergy between these six principles, right? And so what I've noticed is that there's six principles in all that really go into getting a commitment out of your ex, but you can really group these six principles into two different categories. You've got the categories that attack his reasoning, right? So every ex will have a reason for why they don't want to commit back to you. Well, these three principles, satisfaction, alternatives and investment really work to attack that reasoning to convince him that hey yes you should commit to her or him um, and then of course there are the factors that make him want to commit now so 
factors that attack his reasoning, making him satisfied, making him think there's no better alternative out there, making him invest a lot isn't always enough to make him want to commit right now. Well, that's where those factors, these secondary factors come into play. As long as you can couple scarcity, urgency, and fear of loss, you're giving him an active reason to want to commit to you, right? So that is Commitment. That is how you get a commitment from a broad bird's eye view. And those are three of the most common strategies that I've seen people use time and time again. It seems almost timeless. I'm not sure 100% I would say they're timeless yet, but these are the strategies that work time and time again to get a commitment.